I have taken several SQL database for beginners courses on YouTube and Udemy. Don't get me wrong, they are good. They taught me how to work with data in a database. But here's the issue. My company does not provide a database that I can query from. In this video, I will introduce you to SQLite. It is a single disk file, pretty much like the Excel file we are all familiar with. It is user-friendly and you can easily share it via OneDrive with your team. This means that your team can access it anytime, anywhere, ensuring everyone is always on the same page, becoming your department's single source of truth. In this demo, I will load the sales data in this Excel file into SQLite. This Excel file is connected to SAP using AFO. Before implementing SQLite, I will need to refresh the file to get the latest sales data every month and store it somewhere. And we will do some lookups against other tables we have for further analysis. Before we start, I recommend you to have all this software installed. I will include the download links for all of them down in the description box below. To get started, simply right click on your project folder and select open with code. Once you are in Visual Studio Code, make sure to have these two key extensions installed. The first one is Jupyter and the second is Python. After confirming these extensions are installed, let us open up a new terminal. We will begin by verifying the Python version installed in our system. If you encounter any errors during this step, it likely means Python isn't properly installed. Next, we will install the pandas library. Once that is done, head over to the explorer page and create a new file with ipynb extension. You can name it as you wish, just remember it must end with .ipynb. This will be our working Jupyter Notebook. Now, let us talk about getting your Excel data into a SQLite database. It is a three-step process. First, we will load your Excel table into a pandas data frame. Next, we establish a connection with the SQLite database. And finally, we will insert the data frame into the database. Let us dive into the coding part. We will start by importing the necessary Python libraries. Then, specify the path of the Excel file that we are importing from. With pandas, we will read the file and load its data into a data frame. Let me also print the result at the end so that you can visualize it. To execute this code block, simply press Shift plus Enter. The first time you do this, you will be prompted to choose a code interpreter. Go ahead and select Python environments. Now, if you notice multiple Python versions listed, pick the one that matched the version we identified earlier in the terminal. As soon as I execute this code block, you will see that it loads 176 rows. Dates usually play a crucial role in my analysis, and so I typically add an extra column, month date. This column is formatted as a date using data from other columns. Watch what happens when I run the code again you will notice the month date column has been added into our data frame. Next, let us create our SQL database. We will start by importing the SQLite tree library. Next, we specify the path where we want our database to be created. When we connect to this path using the connect method, two things can happen. If a database already exists there, we will just connect to it. If it is not, like in our scenario, it will create a brand new SQLite database for us. After establishing the connection, we set up a cursor. A cursor allows us to interact with the database and execute SQL queries. Lastly, specify the table name that our data will be loaded into the database. Run the code block and notice that our SQLite database had been created in the Explorer view. Then, we insert our data frame into the sales table in our new database. 
Let me run this. And done. Our data is now housed in the database. To make sure everything is in order, I will use SQLite Studio. SQLite Studio is an app for browsing and editing SQLite database files visually. To add our database to the app, click on Database. Add a database. Browse your database file path and click on OK. Once it is added, double click on the database and open our sales table. Check the data tab and here we have all 176 rows of data right there in the database. You might be wondering, what if I accidentally push the same data to the database again? Wouldn't that create duplicates? Good question. Let me outline the steps to prevent this from happening. Outlining before writing your script provides a clear roadmap for your code. It is easier to structure your code logically and coherently when you have a predefined outline to follow. Once we have a clear outline of what needs to be done, let's start writing. We will start by identifying any existing data in the table. In this case, specifically, we are looking at the months and companies already recorded. I will get a list of unique values from the columns. If I call the list, you can check the unique values that are extracted. That is the only month or year period we had in the table. And we have five different companies for the company list. Next, we will merge the two lists to form the basis of our SQL statement parameters. This is where placeholders come into play. In SQL, placeholders are represented by question marks. For instance, if we have five companies in our list, we will use five question marks in our SQL statement. Now let us build our query to delete any rows that match our criteria. The syntax goes like this. Delete from table where column name in our placeholders. Let me also add my second condition to the delete statement. If we run the delete query, it would look something like this. When I run my query along with the parameters, it automatically replaces the question marks in the query with the actual values specified in the parameters, matching them by their order in the list. Before running this delete query, we need to ensure that the table exists. Why? Because if we attempt to delete from a non-existent table, it will throw an error. Let us run the query to check for the table's existence. If the table is there, the query will return the table name. For demonstration, let me delete the table in SQLite Studio and run the check. The result will come back empty. Only if result is not none, will I execute the delete statement. With our script set, let us put it to the test. I will run the entire script and then take a look at our database. There we go. Our data is loaded. Now, if I run the script again and refresh our database view, you will notice the row count stays the same. This confirms that our script is successfully preventing duplicates. Let us now see how the script handles updating our database. Let me refresh my Excel file to import the December 22 sales data. Once our Excel file is updated and saved, click on Run All to execute the script. Switch to SQLite Studio and click Refresh. We will see the new December data appear while our November data remains intact. With our script running smoothly, it is time to consider how our colleagues can access and use this database. We need to install SQLite ODBC driver. This allows Excel to connect to SQLite database. Navigate to this website, download the current version, and install it in your computer. The installation should be quite straightforward, but you need to have admin privilege for you to install the driver. Ask your IT for help if you cannot install the driver yourself. Once installed, open Excel and head over to the Data tab. Here, click on Get Data, then from Other Sources, and finally from ODBC. 
choose SQLite 3 data source and in the advanced options, input database equals follows by your database path. In the SQL statement field, type select star from your table to specify the data that you want to pull from the database. Hit OK. If you encounter a prompt asking for credentials, select default or custom, leave the field blank and click connect. Then click on transform data. This is Power Query. Before we move on, let me rename the query for clarity. Now to make this process easier for your colleagues, create a new parameter in Power Query using your database path. Replace the hard-coded path in your existing query with this new parameter. This way, when you share the Excel workbook, your colleagues only need to update the parameter to the path of the database on their system. This simplifies the process, especially as you work with more queries and tables. You only need to change one value instead of changing the database path in multiple queries. Once we are done, click on Close and Load To, and you will be able to load the tables into Excel. Whenever there is new data being loaded into the database, you and your colleagues can just refresh to get the latest data into Excel. You can also view the data in pivot table if you want. And there you have it. We have successfully created a SQL database, scripted the data loading process, and integrated it into Excel for easy access and analysis. I hope this video can revolutionize your approach to data management and make your life easier, just like how it did for mine. Ever since I implemented this, I have noticed a significant shift in how I work now. More time is spent on meaningful data analysis and far less on the tedious, time-consuming task of searching, validating and processing data before the real work even begins. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Your support means the world and it keeps this channel growing. Until next time, keep automating and innovating. I'm Joel signing off and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.